Adobe's just made a big update to Photoshop this week, and I'm gonna show you my seven favorite features. Now, some of these features you have never seen before. Some of them used to be in beta, and now they're in the main version, and then a couple of them are only in the beta. I'm gonna let you know which version the, each of these features is in. This first new feature I wanna show you is a huge one, and it's in Camera Raw, which is in Photoshop. So if we just go into Photoshop, and then choose Filter, Camera Raw Filter, this will go in here. Now, if we go under the masks inside of Photoshop, a new AI mask has been created, and that's called Landscape. Now, this doesn't just work on landscapes. As you can see, here is a picture that I shot of a building. And notice this can select all types of things. We can select the sky. We can select things like architecture, vegetation, artificial ground, and natural ground. So the artificial ground would be things like cement, concrete, natural ground, things like grass, of course. So the vegetation is going to be pretty much the same, except the tree is going to be included. So why don't we just select all of these right now, and we're going to create individual masks. If I turn this off, it'll make a mask of one, which is kind of pointless. So we're going to choose Create, and you're going to see all the different types of masks. So we can make adjustments of these. So if we choose, say, the architecture, and now I want to make adjustments in here, like maybe I want to take the exposure down just a little bit. Let's scroll down here. I'm going to warm it up just a little touch. Let's make the details pop, give it lots of texture, and give it a little click of um, dehaze here, and just open up the shadows a little bit. Okay, so if we have the backslash key, we can see there's before and after. So I didn't have to make any selections, but maybe I want to adjust the sky. So let's go into the sky here. Let's take the exposure down a little bit. Ah, there are some clouds in there. Good to know. Let's take the highlights all the way back. Maybe give a little color into the blue, but not as blue. So we're just going to take that saturation back a little bit. And maybe this concrete here will make that a little darker. So we're going to choose artificial ground. Let's take the highlights all the way back and roll off the exposure a little bit. And if we look at this before, and after, we can see we've made a massive difference by using these masks. Now, stay tuned for another tutorial where I'm going to dig much more in depth into this. This next feature is a huge one. Um, you might have seen reflection removal in Camera Raw, but it only worked on certain types of raw files. Right now, we have a JPEG, and we're going to go into Filter, and we're going to choose Camera Raw Filter. Now, we're going to go down to the Remove tool, which is going to be the Eraser. And now we're going to choose Reflections and hit Apply. And look at that. We removed the reflection on a JPEG file. Now, if you haven't seen this, I've done a more in-depth tutorial on this as well. So let's take the slider here. Notice it's at 100, which shows the entire image. If I was to slide this back, we could reduce the amount of reflection removal until we go all the way down to zero. And zero will actually give us the original image. But here's where it gets even better. If I go to the left, I can actually start to reduce the amount of the image and show more of the reflection until I go all the way to the end and we just see the reflection on its own. Now, that has a lot of other uses, like maybe you want a reflection because you want to composite reflection onto some glass or use it for other kind of purposes. Okay, next new feature we're going to jump into here was previously in beta, now it's in the main shipping version of Photoshop. And that's a quick way to change the color without making any selections. So let's change the color of her skateboard here. So we're gonna go up under Adjust Colors, and we're gonna click, and you're gonna see a couple of things happen. First of all, a hue saturation adjustment layer is created, and then we get seven of these circles. The first one will shift all the colors together. The other six are the prominent colors within the image, and we can see that one there is the closest to the skateboard. If we click on it, we see three sliders, hue, saturation, lightness. Hue will change the color. So as we slide this, notice we can change the color of that skateboard to something like a red. Now the saturation will be the amount of that color, so we can make it a very vibrant red, or we could make it 
more muted and even go all the way down to just a gray board. Let's give it a little bit more, maybe just slightly reduced saturation to kind of give it a crimsony color. Might want to make it darker and that's where the lightness will go. As we go darker, we can change the color or we can make it you know, lighter or darker. So by using these three sliders, you can change a color to almost any color that you like. I want to show some other options, so let's quickly use a different example. So we're going to grab the adjust colors and we want to change the red in her top. So maybe we could choose one of these red tones or we could grab the eyedropper and we're going to select that red. And by selecting that red, notice there's different shades. So we could go into the more shadowed red or we could go into the highlights. I probably would want to go about there because that's closest to the diffuse value, which is the actual color without shadow or highlight. Now, I can make the adjustment right here. So we could change the hue to a different color, like maybe a blue. Notice her skin tone also changed color as well as the lips. And that's because the color of her skin also falls within that color range. But we can refine this selection. So with the hue saturation selected, double click and it will open the properties panel. Let's drag it out. And if we go to the bottom of the properties panel, we see a color range slider. So here we can adjust the selected color range. There's two sliders and two faders. If we look at the top, this is the original colors or the colors before and the one underneath shows the after what it's been moved to. So we can see the red has become a blue. So what we need to do is take some of that red in the skin tone region, which would be around about here. So we need to change the sliders so that those are not being affected. And then we're going to take that fader, pull it in. And notice as I do that, I can now roll away the color adjustments. And see, as I do that, I can refine that selection and roll it off the skin. Now, if it's also in places you don't want it, such as the lips and maybe here in the scarf, we can easily just paint that away by using black. So if we just grab a brush and make sure we select the mask, with that black brush, we can just paint this away and just have it where we want it. I have a more in-depth tutorial on this. The next new feature I want to show you is now also in the main version of Photoshop where we can select parts of people. So if we go to the selection tool here, we want to use the object selection and then you'll see select people. Notice it's select finding all the people in the image. And if we click down here, we can actually go through the faces and we can select any of these people individually. But if we click here, this shows us there's other things we can select. So if we wanted, we could just select the facial skin on all of the people, or we could choose one person and do them individually. Let's do all the people. And why don't we do the upper clothes? So we're selecting all the upper clothes here. And also if we roll over, we can see dress. So this will select all the dresses as well. So we're choosing the upper clothes and the dresses and we're going to hit apply. And notice all their clothing is selected. So if I wanted to do something like maybe change the color of it, we would just go under here and grab hue saturation. Let's choose colorize. Maybe go for a little St. Patrick's Day. And notice we can select everybody's clothes. Looks like we missed a little bit there, but that could easily just be painted with white to add that. Now, this is going to be an incredibly useful tool to save you time making selections when you're doing retouching and different things like that. So the next new feature I want to show you, I've also done a more in-depth tutorial when it was in beta, but now it's in the real version of Photoshop, and that's doing much better auto selections. So if we look at something like the spokes on bicycles, it would be very, very difficult to get. But let's have a look here, and we're going to choose the object selection tool. So we want to change this to cloud, and this is where the uh, big improvements are happening. And then we're going to choose select subject. Okay, so there we go. We've got some nice selection there. So the next step you want to do is just go under select a mask. 
Let's turn the transparency all the way up and we can look at this against a black background or we could look at it on a white background. And we could do a little tweaking here with the radius, set that maybe to one. Then under output settings, I like to decontaminate colors and that will get rid of the little color fringes. And we'll do a new layer for layer mask and there's our cutout. Let's have a look at against a solid color. I don't know, let's do a red so we can clearly see what's happened. Drag it underneath and let's have a look. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. I mean, look at these spokes and stuff there. Next new feature I want to show you, we're going to shift to the beta version of Photoshop. And make sure you update this to the latest beta that just dropped. Okay, first thing I want to show you is a remove tool improvement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the object selection tool and I'm going to make a selection around this person. Now, if you've ever used generative fill before, when you do it in the shape of a person and you go to remove them, generally you're going to get something else that's going to replace them, like maybe another person. Have you ever had this happen? You go to remove the person, but instead, yeah, okay, now we've got this post. We've got something else in its place instead of the person. So you have done things like type in remove and all the different things like that to try and perfect it. So now if we want to remove something, we just simply go under the taskbar and we're going to click on remove. And now it knows, hey, I want to remove this. I don't want to replace it with something else. And now we get a removal. So the next new feature I want to show you is the new actions panel. So now when we pop open the actions panel, you'll see now we have actions here, but we also have suggested actions. And so what it does is it looks at the photograph, analyzes it, and based on the content, it suggests some of the actions from the included action library. And as I roll over here, I can actually get a preview of what these actions are going to look like. Now, if you look in the layers panel, as I roll over these, you'll notice it actually runs the action in the background. But it doesn't apply it. But if I do click on it, it will apply it. But here's the thing too. So based on the image, we get to refresh it. And we have up to 15 suggestions on here. And then if you want to search the actions and see all the actions that are included, there's no way to do that right now. But there is a little hack that I got from Pete Green at Adobe and has to put a space bar in. And now it will list all the actions that include a space in the name. So if we scroll through, we can see there are a lot of different actions in here and maybe something I want to do like maybe apply a vignette I'll just type in the name and it'll give me a selection so here we go we got some different vignettes and so I could just click to apply and create that vignette and it's on a brand new layer right there so I'm going to do more in-depth tutorials on these new features. Now, some of them have already done the tutorials on, the ones that used to be in beta that are now in Photoshop. But I'm curious. Let me know in the comments underneath what is your favorite new feature. And if you're new, welcome to the cafe. Hit the subscribe button. Turn on notifications. You won't miss any of my tutorials. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.